Hello and welcome to this video on 16 plus ways of getting more out of your analog oscillators in search of unique and interesting tones. And we'll be doing so while exploring the new oscillator from Apollo View Modular. Let's check out what's to come. This video is sponsored by Apollo View Modular. So here we'll look at 16 plus ways of getting more out of your analog oscillators. Looking for unique tones, interesting ways of working, exploring things like sync, PWM, different FM types, and then adding a VCA so that we can have things like waveform morphing and slicing, AM modulation to modulate amplitude for new musical tones. And we're gonna do so across these 16 plus patches. Now we're going to do so with the new oscillator from Apollo View Modular. So let's check that module out before we get into the patches. So here we have the oscillator. It's a seven input, eight output, analog, triangle call oscillator. Starting with pitch, we have our one volt proctive input, coarse and fine tunings, and a switch that goes from audio range to LFO in the middle to ultra LFO to the left. We have exponential and linear FM with attenuators for that control as well. Manual pulse width control with PWM input and then positive and negative going hard sync and a soft sync. And we'll of course explore those in this video. We then have eight outputs and let's take a look and listen to those as we go through them. We have a square sine blend, a good clean sine wave, triangle, Pulse, a Moog style shark tooth wave, a falling saw or ramp, a unique PWM saw, and tuning this up we have the sub which can be minus one octaves, a minus two octave square, or a minus two star, which is a pulse wave derived from blending those other two waveforms. So we'll demonstrate the oscillator and we'll get into all these different patches for really making the most of your analog oscillators, understanding their functions and making one oscillator sound like a much bigger, richer and multiphonic sound source. Those patches have been on screen, so skip around as you see fit and let's dive in. So here we've got this nice kind of swaggery sub thing going on with two synth layers from a single oscillator, single oscillator. And the first layer that I made here was this sub. It's really simple, it's the sub output, which is set to minus two octaves, blue trace there, square wave, into a VCA with an envelope. I then added the square sine to the top VCA, which has a different faster envelope playing. And as both these VCAs sum and mix together, you get a nice blend of the two playing different rhythms off each other. And again, this is all just from one oscillator. 
that's all there is to the synth part, some drums mixed in. So take your single oscillators, take multiple outputs into VCAs, filters and processors, use different modulation and sequences for these different waveforms, and you can create these layered patches that sound like there's certainly more than one oscillator, and almost like more than one synth playing at the same time. So here we're looking at some Buchler-esque or Surge style, West Coast kind of little soft FM, donks, plucks, bongos, however you want to phrase it. Now here's the sine wave from this right hand oscillator, modulated with linear FM from the left hand one. They're both playing the same pitch sequence, which is just a random chromatic thing. And because the FM is quite soft, unlike the exponential FM that I've multed this to just so you can hear it, which is much more aggressive, much deeper FM there. With the linear FM, I quite like it when these aren't in tune, and that's the case here. I could tune this up. You get a kind of soft, almost organ-like tone, and then patching that through a low-pass gate. Ooh, that's nice. Let's hear that on its own. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> Back to the low pass gate, some effects. So here's a really massive mix of free oscillators. I'm fortunate to have three of them, and stacking free saw waves, almost like I'm playing a mini Moog. Just gonna play a little bit of keyboard here, changing the pitch and an envelope to modulate this filter. Let's tune up this envelope a little bit, play around with some arpeggios. So here we're synthesizing nice big electronic kick sounds with the oscillator. Now this patch is a relatively simple one. It's a sine wave coming into a VCA, curious are here. And I'm using an envelope to shape these notes in the VCA. And separate to the envelope control in the VCA, I have a shorter, tighter, more punchy envelope patched to the exponential FM. I'm playing with this depth of pitch modulation and just off screen the timing, the decay rate of this envelope here. Now with a bit of self-patching, we can come away from this pure sine wave sound, patch the sub, set to minus one, into linear FM, and start to feed back the oscillator on itself, creating this interference in these overtones that hint at something not so pure and electronic. If I turn it up full, you can hear it's just this gargly interference. There's a certain rumble and weight to just a bit of that there.
So here we have this big monster tearing kind of PWM sound in stereo. It's a single oscillator with the PWM saw hard right and the pulse hard left. Sub there on the scope is just for reference. Now to start with, here's the basic pulse and the PWM knob is always a manual offset to control that pulse width. If I move across to listen and record the PWM saw, let's add some LFO modulation. Back to the pulse. Now audio rate PWM, as you heard at the start, sounds really nice and tearing on the oscillator. Now this in stereo sounds pretty massive. Let's take a pulse to one side and the PWM saw to the other. modulating our modulation, bringing in the level of this audio rate modulation with another LFO here. And it's some really interesting animated audio rate PWM. So here's a big multiphonic symphonic stereo PWM bass patch. of the sound comes from a single oscillator, a single oscillator. I'd consider there to be three layers going on, but it's all one oscillator. Although I've got multiple here, I really want to stress this is just a single oscillator. Now I'll explain the simplest layer first. The PWM saw wave is coming out into a low pass gate. That low pass gate is struck with a 16th note trigger and I have an LFO panning that around. Now the next two layers are a dynamic modulating blend of the sub output and the pulse output. The sub and the pulse go to this curious VCA combo, with the top channel there being the sub. And my sequencer here, which is Tuesday, has an accent out for this envelope that is bringing this sub in. So it's accenting sub hits on certain steps. Now my main sound, the pulse, plays all the time with the VCA open, and through normalising of the envelope, that ducks when the sub comes in. So you can hear that pulse pulling back. And that sub kind of pushing through, this nice kind of two-way ducking thing going on. That's summed together, and it hits this filter, with a more frequent envelope playing, that envelope is being modulated by a velocity pattern, as is the filter. So a dynamic blend of both sub and pulse. Blend that in with this low pass gate. exploring analog exponential FM. And as you can hear, it can be incredibly musical, incredibly interesting. Now what you've just heard was two sine waves. The sine wave at the bottom here, the yellow trace, is this oscillator on the right, and this Lissajou curve on top is the difference between the modulator and the carrier, the oscillator that we're listening to. This sine wave is modulating exponential FM, and we're hearing and seeing its effects on this one. So let's turn up the depth of modulation. We start with instability. To some interesting musical tones. Now if I add a Volt Proctive sequence. 
it's quite interesting to leave the modulator static there. But let's get this playing the same vault proctor sequence. We have a new musical rich tone to use in our patches. And these are both just tuned in unison, hence that shape just being nice and static there. Now if I tune this up, add some modulation again. Modulator one last time. Oof. So here I've created this slow shifting drone from an oscillator in that super slow LFO mode. Now it really is a super slow LFO mode. I'm at the fastest tuning available. We can really take this quite slow if you want to push the tuning down as well as go into the LFO mode. The sine wave out here, yellow trace and yellow cables, is modulating the panning of this stereo filter, skewing these filter cutoffs. The PWM saw, blue trace and blue cables, is modulating the cutoff. So it's pushing this up with these pulses that rise in this saw like fashion. But not content with a simple modulator, I'm modulating my modulation. Have another oscillator just to the side here, or you could use any other LFO or modulation source to modulate the exponential FM. So that's changing the rate, and I'm doing that with this Moog style shark fin cable, red cable, pinky red trace. And I'm using a triangle from that LFO to modulate the PWM, affecting this PWM saw. And you can see that green trace and green cabling. Today so we're looking at the Hoover bass, that classic Hoover bass patch. And we're going to recreate it here with a single oscillator and the PWM saw output. This triangle wave from another oscillator, again this could be any modulator you choose. Shifting this around and giving those rich kind of detune, almost like fake sense of more oscillators playing against each other. I then have an envelope coming into exponential FM here, and that's this blue trace pitches that sound up and also speeds up the LFO. It quite nicely wobbles faster and tails off as the pitch comes down. And a nice way to thicken this up further would be to tune this up and then say use the sub output. And it sounds massive, it's still a single oscillator. to explore AM synthesis and we need a pair of oscillators and a VCA so we can modulate the amplitude of one of them with the other. Now as I bring that modulation up, we've got an almost ring modulation like sound. Now playing with the pitch of my modulating oscillator here. It's really easy to tune into some musical tones. Now if I wanted to do this dynamically, as modulating the depth of modulation with my fingers, sounds good, 
we could patch that across into another VCA, patch the output of the VCA back to control the level of this one, and I'll use an envelope to control its level. And you can see in here, this is now periodically changing the depth of modulation over time. and play around with some AM synthesis. I think it's a massively underexplored form of synthesis and sound design. So here I'm looking at using multiple oscillators, three of them, to create my own noise sources. And it's playing this kind of funky little hi hat pattern. With lots of random voltages, quite wild fax machine fighting with an old dial up internet modem, come noise generator set, triple oscillator sounds. So if I modulate this from this one, and I modulate this from this one, modulate this from this one that we're listening to with a very chaotic noise source. Massively interactive, massively noisy, massively destructive, but more interesting than using a basic analog noise source a lot of the time. Through VCA here with an envelope, setting this against the kick and snare, with some filtering or some EQ, you'd be well on your way to making your own noisy percussion sounds. Now let's go one step further here and use a random voltage to modulate every volt per octave. Throw random at it if in doubt. As I say, fax machine fighting with an old dial-up modem. Now these PWM saws make for great string synth sounds. Think your classics like the Logan and other various string machines. I'll put some on screen. Here's three oscillators, three PWM saws, and three different rate triangles. You can see them on these LED cables, modulating the PWM. That's a single oscillator. And the other one in unison. And then this one that is an octave up. And they just stack up really nicely. Certainly when there's some effects involved, I should get a small stone phaser and play some Jean-Michel Jarre. So here we're going to look at that sub output, but also look at animating and layering a patch for a more dynamic sound. It certainly sounds like more than one oscillator, which is all we're going to use for our audio path. Now the green trace here is the pulse output from a single oscillator. Yellow trace is the output of my Curiouser dual VCA, which is mixing these two channels together. The blue trace is the sub, which can be minus one octave here, minus two, or a minus two pulse. Now blending that against the pulse, we start to get all sorts of interesting staircase and stepped waveforms. we start to PWM the pulse, modulate its width, get all these little kinks moving around. 
Now, one way I like to work with single oscillators is to take multiple waveforms out down different processing paths, be it different filters, folders, effects, using different rhythms and sequences to animate different waves before blending them back together. So I'm going to use an envelope to control the level of my pulse. And think of this as my main pattern. I've then got another envelope playing a less frequent pattern it's going to come in and bring in the level of this sub. Now if I add in some PWM. But this massive stacked kind of pulse sub sound. So let's check out sync on the oscillator. We have hard sync split into positive going and negative going hard sync and a soft sync. And we'll start with the positive and negative. If I turn up the saw wave in my mixer here, this is the oscillator we're listening to, green trace and cables, and the one next to it, the blue trace there, is what's syncing this oscillator. And hopefully you can see there that it's these positive going edges where this square wave rises up, where it's starting this oscillator to re-sync reset that waveform back to its zero point, the start of its waveform. Now if I go into the negative sync, it's the point where the waveform comes down, negative going waveform, which starts to sync and restart a new wave. If you wanted a much softer sound, you could use soft sync. And you can see it does lock into the harmonics. It's a much softer sync, the sweeping of the oscillator is much smoother. So you can get interesting tones just using it statically like this. But if you modulate the pitch of this oscillator, you start to get these different sync effects. patch up and I sync lead sound. So here we're looking at this sync patch that I've made. And it's full of these really nice ripping hard sync like sounds. This is the oscillator, it's the pulse output and the sub output. Both coming into Curiouser here with the same envelope, just going into some effects and then my mixer. You can hear it's playing a pattern. Now if I sync this, as we were in the explanation of sync to this oscillator that's not been sequenced. We got all these great robotic metallic sync tones. Now I have the syncing oscillator sub coming into my mixer. So if I unmute it and turn on my filter, that's the frequency that this is syncing to. And I thought, well, why don't I sequence the sync source separately to this one? So here's a sequence that's just randomly moving at the start of every bar, every 16 steps in terms of this sequence. It's not always changing pitch, it's quantized, and again, a lot of this is probability based. So let's listen to this in terms of the effect on that. You can hear the effect of the kind of core syncing of this oscillator circuit being pitched up and down from this one and then sequencing kind of dancing around on top. Let's bring this back into the mix. Add some effects to this one. looking at an interesting way of waveform morphing and blending and wave slicing. All my sound comes through this filter. I can bring it up and down as I'm talking, but we'll get to patching that later on as well. Now we're listening to this right hand oscillator. I have a shark tooth wave, blue trace purple cables, 
and a sub green trace green cables into two VCAs. Now Curiouser will take one modulation source and normalize that down to the next, which is this oscillator, currently just a triangle LFO, yellow cables, yellow trace, and I'm just modulating the level of the VCAs. Now if I modulate both of them the same way, my sub and my shark tooth wade just fade up and down. The Curiouser has a 10 verters, so we can actually invert the waveforms. So one comes up as one comes down. We get this seesaw effect in terms of how we blend these waves together. And where it gets really interesting is kicking that up into audio rays. And tune it in to something harmonically related. You can see in here we get a really rich wave. If I change what octave of sub, really fat, unique waveform there. And again, syncing these would get a really stable tone. I like this just slight beating of things not being perfectly locked in sync together. Tuning up some more. Again, really killer sound. Let's play a little arpeggio. Now we can get into this slicing effect, this wave slicing, by using a pulse rather than a triangle to slice between these different waves. And notice you can see these hard jumps between one wave and the other. So if I change pulse width, kind of slicing these little windows of these waveforms. Let's tune this up. Let's arpeggiate again. Add an envelope to the filter. Are you going to try? I'd love to know which one of these has inspired you to go and try this on your own systems. If you'd like access to exclusive videos, PDF rundowns, the DivKid Discord community, and more, check out my Patreon page where you can support me for as little as a dollar a month. Hit like and subscribe, it makes all the difference to the channel, and there's some affiliate links as well if you'd like to passively support me when you're going shopping for new gear. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.